Hello. So in today's video, we will be talking about everything about academic conferences. We will discuss why is it important for PhD and early career researchers to attend conferences, how to find the best conference in your field, and when you are going to a conference, what you need to do in that conference. Let's roll the intro. All right, so PhD research can be extremely, extremely demanding and it's very isolating experience for many researchers, for many students, uh, depending on the subject area in which they are. I was lucky to study marketing. Uh, I had to do a lot of networking, talk to a lot of people, but I know that there are a lot of PhD students who spend a lot of their time in labs or in you know, in, in a small isolated room. So for many people, when they think about going to a conference, uh, it is like a vacation. It's like a time off their lab or time off their department. Uh, for others, it can be a good way to network or to learn more type of things uh, in these conferences and everything. So um, obviously, it's a polarizing subject. One group of students look at conferences in one way, another group of students look at the conferences in another way. However, it doesn't matter. Whatever is the view on conferences, in my opinion, conferences are inevitable for PhD students. They are extremely important for the career of researchers especially. However, having said that, I also understand that people have concerns about uh, which conference to attend? There's a lot of conferences. Why should we attend these conferences? Where should we get the funding for these conferences? And especially, what is the right conference for me as, as a PhD student, right? So this is what we will cover in the video. I will try to answer all these questions. However, before I go to answer these questions, I kindly request all of you to please uh, like the video, share this video with others who you think uh, may get benefit from this video. Um, and also tell me a little bit in the comments about your experiences. I still remember that I started my PhD in 2012, uh, September in Malaysia, but then I went to Thailand uh, in May 2013, like six, seven months after my PhD started, uh, almost a year after my PhD started. And I was very nervous because it was the first conference I was attending in another country. And there was not a lot of uh, help available to know about what to do at the conference, how to present. I still remember very clearly that I struggled a lot with how to design my, my own PowerPoint slides because I had no clue what to present and what not to present. So um, tell me in the comments about your experiences of the first ever conference that you have attended as a PhD student. And I, I would uh, really love to read about that uh, from, from all, all the viewers of this video. So the number one reason that many people cite to attend conferences is networking opportunities. And I think if you talk to 100 people, 95% of them would tell you that you should go to conference because of networking, which is obviously a very valid point that conferences do bring a lot of networking opportunities. However, many people go to conferences and it's also not very uncommon to know that I didn't learn anything at the conference. Yes, I did meet people, but it was not very fruitful or whatever. So what we will do is we will um, dissect this video into a few different parts. Uh, but before I go into all those parts, uh, the question that whether I should attend the conference or not as a PhD student, the answer to that, a simple answer to that is definitely yes. You do, sh you should attend the conferences with a caveat, right? So you should attend the conferences only if that is the best conference for you to attend or that is the best conference in your research area. So for instance, in my, um, my area right now, I'm in hospitality and tourism marketing. For me, there are some major conferences like ICRE's annual conference that I definitely attend. Then the graduate conference I definitely attend. Sometimes Eurocree or Epicree conferences I attend. For marketing, I know that for people in marketing, AMA, which is American Marketing Association, that conference is very important. Every year they attend it. For services marketing folks, they attend service forum 
or TCR conference and stuff like this. So um, you should definitely go to the conferences, but select the best conference for yourself. And um, I will give you two very simple reasons for why you should attend these conferences. Number one, more and more schools are creating PhD programs, right? So in the start, I remember when I was starting my PhD, not too many people were offering PhD in hospitality and tourism, but today, um, every month, every year, we hear more and more schools offering PhD programs, which means there's more and more competition, right? So to deal with that competition and to stand out, I think, number one, um, it, I wouldn't say it's easy, but it's comparatively easier to get funding to go to conferences and develop yourself as a PhD student. So that's one reason. I also understand that students, many of the PhD students, at least in my area, they are international students and they spend a lot of money on their tuition, on their living expenses and everything. And when it comes to select jobs or to search jobs, they don't have a lot of money to spend on the job search process. So in my opinion, attending conferences can be a very good tool for job searching, to search jobs, to talk to people and everything. The second reason for PhD students who are in the PhD process, of course, for many of them, they need to go into higher education or in academia for their jobs or careers. So remember that the best conferences in your field also attract the best faculty and administrators from that field. So going to these conferences, the best conferences in your area can also allow you to meet these faculties and these ad administrators from your discipline. So it can help your network and know those. From here, uh, most of you um, might have this question in your mind, like, okay, I understand this. I need to go to the best conference, but how do I select this conference? How do I choose this conference, right? Which we understand that there's a lot of conferences happening in different areas, uh, as well as there's limited funding. So not only that there's a lot of options, but then the funding is also limited. So it's obviously very important for you to select which conference should you go to and how to make the most out of it, right? So I'll give you a few tips on how you can find the best conference in your area. Number one is identifying relevant events. So the best is not always the most relevant to you, right? So you need to select the relevant event for yourself. Now, how you can do it is uh, one, by selecting or being part of subject specific listservs or mailing lists. I am, like I said, I'm in hospitality and tourism marketing. So in tourism research, there's one listserv which is called Trinet. It's an email listserv and I'm part of it. Um, every day, every two days, every five days, there's some important discussion on that mail server about different things. But one of those things is also conferences. They do mention the conferences or they do report the conferences that are upcoming. So I think that way you can identify um, how, which conference to go or which conferences are happening in your area in the next few months or new, next year or whatever. So that's one thing. The other thing is also, if possible, join the professional association in your field. So again, in hospitality, our professional association is called CRE, which is Council for Hospitality Educators, um, CRE. Uh, I am a part of it. And then that brings a lot of notifications about the conferences that they have. So CRE has its own annual conference. And then they also have uh, smaller federations. And every year, each federation also has its own conference. So those are relevant to me, right? Now, in hospitality, sometimes you can also think about very specific conferences. So for instance, uh, if you are in finance or technology area within hospitality, then the professional organization for that one is HFTP. If you are in sales and marketing, then the professional organization for that one is <clears throat> HSMAI, right? So you need to select those professional organizations or associations in your field, join them. There's always student memberships and they're very cheap. So that would also give you an indication of what conferences are happening and how should you go to those conferences. So let's say if you don't know what is the professional association in your area or what are the uh, mailing lists or listservs or whatever in your area, then you need to talk to your supervisor, your advisor or your seniors, right? So other PhD students who have started before you, your colleagues, they would be also a very good resource to tell you which association, which organization you should join, and definitely uh, which mailing serve, uh, mailing list or list serve you should join. So that can also help you. And while you talk to your uh, supervisor or seniors, 
please do also talk about funding uh, sources, right? So because most of the conferences these days are expensive, I don't think uh, for many PhD students, it's, uh, it's really possible to pay out of their own pocket for the conference registration, for living, for accommodation, for, you know, the flight tickets or whatsoever. So talk to your supervisors, advisors, or your department to see if there's any funding um, source that you can select. Also, lastly, consider some additional benefits of the conferences. So let's say if you have shortlisted two, three, four conferences that you want to go to, but you have limited funding to only attend one or two conferences. So in that situation, what you need to do is think about additional benefits. So some conferences have um, um, sure uh, books published out of them. So, you know, your conference papers or proceedings can be published as a book, which can be a good benefit for many PhD students. In some conferences, there are subsequent seminars. So they take some students or other researchers to create seminars of like-minded scholars. So that can be another good benefit. Many, many conferences have started doing workshops. So PhD workshops or research methods workshops. So you can also think about that. So if you go to a conference, obviously presentation, meeting people, networking, everything is good. But you may also be uh, allowed to take part in a PhD workshop or in a research methods workshop. So pre-conference, for example, the first day of the conference, they do a research academy and a teaching academy. So that is quite beneficial for many uh, scholars, right? So that's another way of looking at which conference you should um, attend. Now, <clears throat> once we um, are done with this, once we selected which conference I'm going to go to, then the second question arises, okay, how should I get the most out of that conference? And like I said, the number one reason is networking. So you need to schedule your conference plans around how to network at the conference, which can then really determine, is it valuable? Is it fruitful to go to that conference or not, right? So um, I would start this by saying that everybody, when they go to a conference, there's a reason to be there, right? So let's say if you are going with your professors, with your advisors, with other PhD students, with your seniors, they have their own reasons to go to that conference, as well as you have your own reasons to go to conference, right? So remember the people you already know, let's say your colleagues, your PhD students, other students in your department, you already know them, they are going to conference, you are going to conference. Remember, they have their own reason to go to that conference, right? So you, they cannot babysit you, right? So you need to decide on your reasons for going to the, that conference and then schedule your plan around that. I would say that one thing you should do is definitely arrive early. Over the years of my own experience as a professor, as a teacher, as an advisor, I've seen that sometimes students only go on the day when they are presenting. Sometimes it's the second day, the third day of the conference, which I don't think is a very good idea, especially if you are either very new or either if you are finishing your PhD, right? Because that way you are really limiting your chances of networking with people. So number one tip, is arrive early, go as early as possible um, before the conference, usually either the first day of the conference or a day before the conference, and then try to identify people, right? Because when you are early, you'll also see other people who are early and then you can talk to them. Uh, before going to the conference, tip number two is make sure that you have your elevator pitch ready, which means that you should have 30 to 60 seconds elevator pitch ready about your research. Because at conferences, the first, the most common question is, uh, first of all, people are going to ask you, what do you do and which school do you belong to, right? So that's, that's easy that you can talk about. But then the most common question is, okay, what are you working on? Right. So nobody has time to listen to you for 10 minutes where you are just going on and on and on and on and talk about your research. That's not how it is done. You need to be ready with 30 to 60 seconds of pitch so that you can talk to people about what exactly you are doing and why is it important. Right. So the more people you talk to, you also get more practice to talk about your own research. So that's another tip. The third tip is get in touch with uh, people beforehand. OK, so. How this is done is most of the conferences publish their programs early, like two weeks, three weeks before the conference. You need to go to the website, download that, see who is coming to that conference. Look at the keynote speakers, look at the professors, look at other PhD students, see who is coming. And I would highly recommend you to get in touch with these people beforehand. Send them an email, tell them about you, say that you want to meet them, say that you want to talk to them for some time, schedule a meeting and then meet them, right? So that's very important. 
remember that um, the reason why this uh, appointment is important is because just like you, many other people might also want to meet them, right? So if you email them, that shows your seriousness of meeting these people. The second thing is uh, not only should you meet these people, but also try to attend their presentations. So if there are keynote speakers or there are some uh, popular researchers or prominent researchers in your area, whether they are PhD students or professors or assistant professors or associate professors, go to their presentations, listen to them, it should be relevant. So somebody who is in your area, who is presenting some good research in your area, go and listen to them see what are they talking about it can give you some good ideas at the same time you should also invite people to come to listen to your research i understand that for the first time when you're going to a conference and you are presenting you may be very nervous you don't want a lot of people in the room because you don't want people to question you or whatever but that's part of learning try to invite as many people to a presentation as possible again relevant people and you should have one motive in mind that you're going to get feedback from these people on your research. Um, another tip is try to look for people who have graduated from your school before you. So maybe a few years before you, if somebody has graduated from your school, try to see where they are working at right now. Maybe they are working at another school um, that has a PhD program. Talk to them, right? Try to tell them about your research and then you can get a better opportunity for your PhD funding or for your job or whatnot, right? So that's another tip. Lastly, I've seen that at, at many conferences, people go as a group. So let's say um, 10 people, six people, eight people from one department are going to attend a conference. Most of the time I've seen them hanging around with each other, which is okay, but not so okay. Because remember you are going to conferences. If you are going with your friends, you already know them. So why would you spend your time knowing them more, right? Because you already know them. So I think the better idea would be to network with other people, try to know more people so you can develop your own network of co-authors, collaborators, people who would know about you, about your work and everything else. And then another idea is also to make sure you attend the conference dinner. Usually conference dinners are on the last day. Many students leave before that, maybe to avoid the cost or whatnot. Uh, but conference dinners are good because that's the time when many people talk to each other informally. They know each other much in, in a much informal way and everything. So that can help you quite a bit because it's another dimension of networking, right? Um, or another way would be to socialize with other PhD students or other early career researchers, not at the conference site, but maybe outside, right? A lot of people go to local pubs, bars, restaurants. So try to hang out with them, know more about them. In the end, I'll say the reason why I created this video, 15 minutes long video to talk about conferences is to make you understand one very simple thing. Okay, Remember that when somebody is going to hire you as a faculty member or as a PhD student, they are not only getting you for your brain. Okay, They are looking at you as an asset, as an overall asset, not just your brain, but as an overall asset. When you go to conferences, when you attend these conferences, when you make the most out of these conferences, um, that can be only done by making more collaborations and more connections. The more collaborations and connections you make, you are building more of your own brand assets or asset value, net asset value, right? So equip, with your, equip yourself with the latest trends, with the latest research that other people are doing. Try to know more about people and try to make the most of, out of what you are doing, right? So whatever investment you are putting in this conference, it can only be made uh, it can only be made um, better by when you create you know future research directions out of it so what i mean simply is that you go to a conference you attend the phd workshop or a research workshop you build your own uh, intellect right of course you learn more about research you go you listen to other people's researches it gives you better ideas of looking at research you get feedback on your research, you can improve your research. That's another benefit. You network, that means you are creating pipeline of collaborations and collaborators and co-authors, right? Um, I'll give you my own example. In the last 10 years of my academic journey, I started my PhD in 2012, September. So almost 10 years. Uh, I've done close to 95, 96 research papers, but I work with 144 co-authors, which is a strength. Um, so, you know, these networks, these networking collaborations, meetings at conferences can really, really uh, make it work. So I hope you like the video. I hope you learned something from this. 
Um, I wish all of you good luck, and I hope I'll see some of you down the road at some conference. Thank you. Uh, stay safe. God bless you.